<laughs> it's controversial. Having that guy around is the, the best thing that ever happened to the squad. If you have the right mix of autism and steroids, all these pundits and whatnot, a lot of people doubting me, you know. I don't want to fucking have a conversation while I'm showering, you know, like, the hobby I do is already so gay. You are now listening to the El Segundo podcast with Craig Jones. El Segundo podcast is back, and we're going to start with basically a valuable lesson Colby Covington taught us about America, and that is you can say anything you want. You could walk out, say, I hate gay people, I hate women, I think the homeless people should die, as long as you follow it with, but I support first responders, I support the troops, and God bless America, and the whole crowd will cheer. America is basically a sports team but a sports team in the Special Olympics. That's how I'd summarize basically what we learned from this weekend. God bless America, brother. It's crazy. I was in the crowd and I was sitting next to, there were a couple of like uh, foreign people there and we were all like looking at each other during the fight where they're chanting USA, USA. We're at the weigh-ins. So that press conference, Colby says to Leon about his dad being in hell. Leon's dad was murdered in a nightclub when he was 14. Um, Colby Covington brings that up. And the crowd still cheers. Like he says, he talks about his dad being murdered and he's trying to make a joke about it. And the crowd hesitates for a second and then he's like, God bless America. And then they're like, fuck <laughs> yeah, that's our boy, Mountain Dew. You know, it's fucking wild, eh? But all the people that weren't American were just like, what is happening, eh? Like it's crazy. Like obviously I do love America, not as much as these guys do. We're very passionate about it, eh? But, uh, if you're an American person and you ever wonder why other countries are confused by you or your behavior, take a look at the crowd response to a guy like Kobe Covington. Yeah, yeah, he got a big pop at the at the venue. Huge pop, even during the like the story of the fight is the horrible things Kobe said. But God damn it, that will not stop a USA chant. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that in my life. I was mind blowing. Hey, it's like. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, but, it is what it is. But God bless America. Don't forget. But we are glad. Um, we are glad that Leon got it done. I got to take these off and reveal my peace bracelet. Don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, yeah, but where should we start? Obviously, we haven't done a podcast yeah. for a while. Yeah. But I was at the fights, UFC 296, and something interesting did happen right next to me. And I want to explain. The full Strickland uh, Duplessis saga. Um, so I guess the fights with Vox. Vox has to do a fan meet and greet before. So we're literally there before even the fans are. Like we're there early, like early before prelims. the early prelims even yeah. started. We we didn't even know what was going on. So we had been in there when it was completely empty. But we went through our seats, and me and Vox were sitting in the um, obviously the star section. I'm riding his coattails here, right? And as I sit down, the seats are labeled. And I look next to him and it says Sean Strickland. He had two seats there. And I was like, this is going to be an interesting night. I already knew it. Just seeing his name there, I knew this would be very interesting. And Sean arrived probably, I don't even know at what point, but close to the main card. Mm -hmm. Like uh, something you'll notice if you go to a live event is most of the best seats, the most expensive or the ones that are given away, those guys don't even show up until... Halfway through, yeah, yeah. you know, which I, I don't blame him. But on this particular night, all the fights were pretty goddamn good. But Sean's there, and he's 100% there for the Tony Ferguson, Patty Pimblett fight. So just, just for frame of reference, right, Sean starts talking to us about Tony Ferguson, and he starts telling me and Volkanovski how insane a person Tony Ferguson is. He's like, yeah, I used to train with him. The guy's really crazy. He hears voices in his head. And me and Volks are like looking at him and then looking at each other. And we're like, how fucking insane does a human being need to be where Strickland's concerned yeah. about your mental health? <laughs> That's how it started, right? And then during this fight, uh, obviously Ferguson gets taken down. He's trying to play guard off his back. And then Strickland starts ranting about how jujitsu doesn't work. Again, he does have no idea who I am. Oh, he so, doesn't? That, okay. Or he's the fucking best troll of all time. <laughs> because he's ranting about it, right? 
And we're all joking about what the fuck David Goggins is saying there. You know what I mean? Like, is it like you, he's like, you lose the first round. David Goggins is like, good, good, do it again. <laughs> you need that. That's growth, personal he, growth. He was know? like, uh, get your fucking head into Tony. Like, just like motivational shit, but has nothing to do with fighting. Tony's uh, probably never had his head in it at any point. <laughs> I don't think that's a factor in any of his fights. Yeah, it's been a while for sure. But during this fight, Strickland literally goes live on Instagram and he's filming the fight and he's yelling out, Jiu-Jitsu doesn't work. And he's yelling at David Goggins. He's like, Goggins, tell him to stand up. Tell him to stand the fuck up. And fucking eventually, Goggins starts repeating what Strickland's saying to him. Oh, no way. Literally starts listening to Strickland halfway That's through. Amazing. And then when Goggins started doing that, Strickland switches the camera from face the octagon to us and he puts me in the middle of him and Vox and he's like, guys, tell him, it just, it just doesn't work. It does, it's fake, it doesn't work. He's saying all this shit, then he unfortunately deleted the live. So it started, his immediate presence was already fucking pretty chaotic, yeah. right? So that goes down and then um, you already know, like, so when a celebrity, well, when the fighter's heads pop up on screen, they there's a lady that works for UFC, I forget her name now, but she's the one that... uh blasted Marigali at the Fight Pass event. Oh, um, I forgot her name. name, but the sweet old lady. Yeah, she's, oh, oh she'd be angry about that. But she she basically goes up to the fighter before and is like, hey, yo, we're going to, um, we're going to uh, throw you on the screen after and they get the cameras in position and shit. So that's when I did the sneaky little yeah, yeah. nose symbol and they quickly, so I got to do the nose symbol and then it immediately went to fucking Donald Trump after that, which I thought was pretty, <laughs> was pretty good. Imagine Donald Trump would have had a few in his day. Seems like the type of guy that might still have it today. That was during you did that during the Tony fight. During the was it during it? No, I'm asking because I oh, was I was, was at the ADC open. No, it was before Strickland got there. I believe. Okay, okay, right. okay. So it was early. But then when Strickland arrived, obviously she comes up. She's like, "Yo, we're gonna throw you on screen." And Drickus is sitting like two or three seats behind. It's, it's two. It's like Gilbert's family and him right after. Yeah, Gil, yeah Gilbert's family and him. Right behind it, right? So it was pretty good. Sometimes they move the fighters around to stage them yeah. for these things. But they, this is actually where they were sitting. So it's on Strickland. Strickland basically turns around and Drikas is there, showing him face off. Strickland's uh, pretending to pretending to shoot him. Yeah. And then start going back and forth. I think Drikas was like, do it or something. And then literally Sean asked uh, Gilbert to get his wife and kids out of the way. Yeah. Legend for that. Super polite. Super polite, awesome, legit, awesome to get. He's like, can you move across? And then just pounces on Drickus and starts throwing some 12 to 6 elbows yeah, and yeah. shit. And the whole time I'm just in disbelief of what's happening. But I remember thinking like there were some guys there that tried to break up the fight. And yeah. I was just like, man, this guy was just insulting jiu-jitsu. Let it, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Like if you're trying to break that up, like let's just let it happen. Yeah. But allegedly during this scramble mm – -hmm. They're obviously holding Strickland's arm. Strickland ends up on top. I swear to God, this motherfucker went for a Mike Tyson ear bite. He's like, just fucking tries to bite his ear as they get separated. And like in the moment, I was like, am I imagining this? And then I've tried to find footage since, and I, I can't see it. Yeah. I can't see it clearly. Yeah. But from the angle I was standing, I was like, I swear this motherfucker just tried to bite him. And then they separated it. Obviously, Vegas police came in. And then uh, Brandon Allen came and just took, Strickland seats are obviously entertaining. Have him next mm -hmm. to me all night, eh? He's he's a pretty funny guy, actually. Uh, during some of the fights, saying some funny shit. Pretty pretty smart move for you. You show up with like a bright orange bucket hat, and everybody knows it's you. Like the Kangol, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's gonna have to be a serious fight for me to risk getting the Kangol involved. You know, <laughs> the Kangol comes off. Uh, so I'm pulling guard. It's funny you know? watching it because I just see you stand up, but you're just like looking at it, and it's happening right next to you. You don't move. You're just like, oh, this is. We were just amazing. laughing, eh? Because I mean, it wasn't that violent. <laughs> like I, you saw, no one took any yeah, real damage yeah, or anything. Yeah. It was just hilarious, eh? Hey? That is and pretty funny. It should have easily been, I mean, maybe predicted. But the funny thing for Drikas is like, Drikas is a guy that's now been in two of the biggest uh, non-fighting moments mm -hmm. in the UFC. Yeah, like yeah. he had the face-off with Izzy. With Izzy, yeah. And then now this, and it's like, well, this guy just is like getting all this insane marketing yeah. just accidentally. Yeah, yeah, fighting the right guys. I mean, it does make you want to watch this more than you wanted to watch it before, for sure. Yeah, for for sure, for sure. I know Dana came up after, and like, I'm pretty sure he was just like asking people like, what happened and yeah. stuff. And it's like, obviously, Sean 
went crazy. Yeah. Eh? He took a he took the credit, not the credit. He he took the blame for um having them sit where they were sitting. I'm assuming it wasn't him, but he's like, "Fuck it, it was my fault. They shouldn't have sat next to each other. It's too close." Yeah, but I mean, Drinkus isn't a guy that you mentioned is going to start some shit. But I guess what he said at the press conference was uh, very provocative. It really got under his skin, huh? I felt like what really provoked Strickland as well was when he was like. Uh, basically saying something that is true. Hey, you're a one and one guy. Yeah, yeah. They got the shot. He, it's like the Cinderella story. He's like a Rocky Balboa moment. He got a title shot. He really didn't earn. Yeah. Took full advantage of it, you know, and I felt like when Strick, when uh, Drika said that to him, I felt like that actually really bothered him because obviously there's a, there is a bit of truth to yeah. that and it's probably something that he feels that he needs to prove a point yeah. that it wasn't a fluke moment you yeah know? do you think it was that or the dad thing because to be fair like where do you draw the like they're fighting each other they're punching each other in the head where do you draw the line on shit talk i don't know i mean i think it's entirely like obviously like colby overstepped it you know but i think it's entirely up to you but you better be willing to deal with the consequences mm -hmm. so don't cross the line and then make complaints about how people treat you later or people don't like you or like say colby gets attacked in the street calls the police and stuff it's like yeah I mean, it's uh, it's a game to you, but like, you, I mean, you talk yeah. about someone's murdered father. That's yeah, like yeah. expect consequences, you know. Yeah. And he had the thing with with uh, Masvidal as well. Yeah, what did he, he lost the tooth with that, right? I think that's what they said in the police. I don't know if he made that up because I'm assuming he fucking the UFC gave him that title shot based off of that. Like, don't fucking sue this guy or us or whatever. But I heard that, but I didn't see anything. I never seen like a picture of his fucking tooth fucked up or anything, you know. I mean, it was good. It was a good, obviously, I, I imagine that sold a, a fair few pay-per-views and stuff, but, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. That definitely crossed the line. But, yeah, I, I mean, Drake is talking about, I mean, Sean O'Malley literally was like, yo, your dad used to fuck you. Yeah, said the same thing pretty much, like, a couple minutes before. Yeah, but I guess also it's, like, based on uh, how much people like you. People love Sean O'Malley, yeah, so yeah. it's like you, you sort of get it. I feel the same way, and you just, like, say whatever I want. I get a free pass. Obviously not talking about people's murdered dads or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I definitely makes me more interested in watching that fight because of the shit that goes down because like you need emotion to build fights as opposed to like being cordial and stuff but i do get it i mean colby did cross the line with the father thing for sure it's like a dead somebody's dead father's pretty fucked up pretty fucked up he needs a lot of uh a lot of security at these things now eh? yeah yeah fucking hilarious what happened though he looked uh he looked pretty terrible I think it was just because he was moving back the whole time. Kobe usually just jabs, yeah, shoots, moves forward. Leon Edwards wrestling was sick, super uh, sick, man. Take took him. He's took taking down Kamaru Usman and Kobe Covington. That's yeah, impressive. That's sick. As a non-American, again, this podcast was very anti-American, but like for Americans to be taken down by any of the former colonies <laughs> is a complete insult to their culture of who they are. There's nothing worse yeah. than being taken down by an Aussie, a British guy. People that don't even have wrestling in school. Imagine, Colby clearly went to school, but he only wrestled because he didn't learn anything else. You know what I mean? So it's like you take a guy that only did wrestling. Leon Edwards is a striker that double legged you. Yeah. And he's not, a, he's not American. Yeah, it yeah. fucking kills me. It's hilarious. Yeah. Won a lot of, uh, and also won a lot of like uh, grappling exchanges throughout the match too, which was fucking pretty impressive as well. I didn't think, I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, most of the time, Colby got on top at all was just because Leon was actually taking some risks in the grappling exchanges looking for a finish. Yeah, yeah. You know? He didn't take many risks in the striking, really. He played very conservative, yeah. very safe. But on the ground, especially as the fight progressed, he took some big chances, ended up on bottom and got up so easily. So easy, yeah. I mean he's he seemed massive compared to Colby to be fair. But you're like friends with the camp. Do you did you hear before like he was like trying to prove a point? Because I think he could have starched him on the feet if he really wanted to. I don't know. I mean, I was at the after party with him. Uh, I know his manager, Tim, and stuff. And, like, uh, I think he just basically treated like any other fight. You know, obviously, it was probably emotional after press conference. But I know some of his boys flew in, mm -hmm. and that really calmed him down, relaxed him. I met some of his uh, guys uh, at the after party and stuff. Really cool. cool it's, again, get along well with that culture, your British yeah. culture and shit. A lot of banter, shit talking, good mm -hmm. people. Yeah, yeah. That they, he seems like a pretty cool guy, and his team around them seems pretty sick too. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a wild event all round. Like uh, the crazy shit is, is the worst part about the event. I would say for me personally was during the Pantoja Royville fight. Mm -hmm. The entire row of fighters behind me were Brazilian, <laughs> and just screaming the entire time, like just 
like, oh, gave me a headache straight away. Eh? And I was just like, please, someone fucking finish this fight. <laughs> so I don't have to listen to 25 minutes of. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, that was pretty sick fight. Fucking Bryce Mitchell and uh, and Josh Emmett was crazy, bro. Just yeah, like, that was wild. Yeah, I thought he was dead for real. I saw a meme that it was like, the earth is flat and so is Bryce Mitchell. And I was just so I can die laughing. Yeah, Bryce Mitchell got the Jesus knocked out of him, <laughs> eh? Like, they should take his camo shorts back <laughs> after that. Yeah, fuck, that was bad. Heavy, was though. Bad. Emma is like, if he connects, yeah. scary. Yeah. But he just has trouble connecting on some yeah. of the better guys. Yeah, yeah. Now, was that the first punch thrown in the fight? I think the first clean thing landed, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. I remember reading when Emmett got knocked out by Jeremy Stevens, he had, like, vertigo for three months and, like, all these fractures in his face. And I was like, Oof. fuck. You give me vertigo for three months, yeah. I better have some fucking... I better be getting paid a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, what Keenan was talking about, knock the crystals off your ear and shit. There you go. That That is true. That is true, yeah. Heavy. I mean, he's uh, obviously been on the receiving end of a bad one, but he's given out quite a few heavy knockouts as yeah. well. But those are the scary ones because you see the body seize up. Yeah. Even his eyes are open and his eyes were moving in weird ways and stuff. And you look at that and you're like, oh. Yeah. Not fun. Um, and then Touchy Feely had a good one too. He fucking. You were, so you were there all the fights. So you got to see I all saw, of them. Yeah. I saw every fight. Yeah. That was sick. That was early as fuck too. I was like pretty impressed. The whole, yeah, the whole car was great. It was good to be in that section, like best seats in the house yeah. for that event and obviously best seats in the house for the strickland Drikas thing. But basically, that was the UFC story. Yeah, we had the after party after. It was at Excess. Sammy at Excess looked after the boys. Sadly, I didn't get to sleep till fucking 7.30 or something. Yeah. Horrible decision. <laughs> but I'm not a, it's not a hard arm to twist. I make so many jokes about partying and doing drugs now that wherever I go that opportunity is presented it to me. You know what I mean? Fucking no pity. You did that shit to yourself. Yeah, I know, but it's like, it's hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to say no, not because of drugs, because I'm a polite guy. You know what I mean? That's the type of guy I am. You're a good friend. You're a good I've friend. I've got a reputation to live up to, especially as an Australian amongst <laughs> Americans. We have a standard of partying across the board and, and nobody <laughs> other than the Brits or Aussies do it better than us. You know? Yeah. Did everybody go out with you? Americans be the type of guy that you lay down a line where you give them a pill and they split it in half. <laughs> and, like, that's the thing about Americans because an Aussie, I would rather overdose and die than be seen to split something, you know? Like, I remember growing up when we'd take shit, I'd be like, should I take a half? And they'd be like, if it was meant to be taken in halves, it would come in halves. And that's a philosophy I've lived by ever since. But that is the thing about Americans, shameless behavior in scenarios like that, you know? Like, <laughs> they pour, you, you give them a pill and they go, you know what? Safety first. Um, I'll take a half. I'm going to stick up for my buddy here and say, somebody has to make it to the next day. Somebody has to be there the next day to be like, support the troops, support first responders. God bless America. I'm only doing half a line. And that's why I believe there's a fentanyl crisis here because not enough Americans are being taken out by clean drugs because they don't do enough of them. So someone's had to spike the supply to put these Americans down. Eh? Let's talk about our favorite... Sponsor from Texas, Everton. Everton have actually advised us, hey, ease up on the dick pills. So is my doctor. But we're going to talk about something else, and it loosely relates to dicks as well. Everyone knows, everyone's heard of Decca because of Decca Dick. That's a myth. I can confirm that. Nandrolone, Decca something, it's pronounced, is good for joint health recovery. That's why I pump Decca all the time. That's why. I never do any warm-ups. I never stretch. Stretching sounds like some fucking gay yoga shit, hey. I never do any of that stuff, and my joints are killing it. And that's solely thanks to Decca. Decca's great. Freddie needs Decca. I'm on it right now. Actually, my knee feels fucking great. I was going to say, uh, my knee has, I've been doing it for like three weeks, and my knee uh, had two torn meniscus. I don't even feel them anymore. You don't feel them? No, either they're not there anymore, period, or it, it healed it. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to chuck it up to Everton. Shout out Everton. Nicky Ryan needs Decca ASAP. That's a man's <laughs> body that's built for Decca. <laughs> but yeah, just general muscle growth. Good for your joints. Don't read into the myths about Decca Dick. That's only if you're pumping massive, massive doses, which would be like, why well, my dick doesn't work before ADCC. But that's a story for another time. The dosages that medical professionals would recommend, such as Evertine, are safe on your penis, and that's what's most important here. So despite 
Ever time requesting we lay off the dick pills, we've circled this back to a conversation about penises. And on that note, we will give you 5% off if you use the code B-team of everything excluding blood work. But speaking of drugs and weird things, we went to karate combat and that in and of itself was basically a psychedelic experience. That's one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. It was bizarre. It was literally the embodiment of an 80s movie come to life. Like there's yeah. guys in fucking karate pants yeah. with belts, mullets, fucking <laughs> insane names. Like there was one guy that came out and no joke, mullet, he had the most Southern American name ever. He comes out to fight this guy in the karate combat thing. Like comes out, ridiculous American walkout song. This is, sounds so anti-American, I'm gonna get deported, but it was just wild because it's like, obviously like an 80s American movie. So he comes out, he knocks the guy out, he jumps on the side, he kisses his girlfriend, says some funny shit in the interview. Like, and I was just like, what the fuck is happening here? And the whole crowd is full of weird people, wait. Like, if you go, if you like, I don't know how people live in Vegas. Yeah, You know, like obviously, if you've only been to the Strip, you would say, I don't know how people live in Vegas. But like, even off Strip, like we went to this event and Vegas is full of the strangest people ever. Like, Chris Angel is sitting there watching Karate Combat. And I'm like, "You're he's a magician. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you never <laughs> expect to see a magician in real yeah. life just doing real life shit. Yeah. I don't know how old he is, but like at what point he looks do you fucking old. take off the costume? I don't know. Like it's yeah. like, it's like he's the world's, it's like you're an old emo or something. I mean, know? it makes sense to see a guy like that at a karate event. Like where the fuck are we? Yeah, like think about that. I'm sitting there and... Again, riding the coattails, we're front row, and I look to my left, and it's a fucking Chris Angel there watching karate with me. I'm like, what yeah. on earth? I look to my right, there's a guy in a fucking Hugh Hefner fucking outfit over yeah. there. The whole crowd's wild. Yeah, yeah, Everyone has massive sunglasses, wearing bizarre shit. Like, it's Chris Angel here. The Meow Brothers were in that corner. Just yeah. bizarre. What the fuck were they doing there? So, they're probably looking at me thinking the same thing, eh? <laughs> But the whole thing is weird. They have these girls dressed like aliens that were dancers that would perform b between yeah, fights yeah. and shit. That, which it was bizarre because at some points the music the music went out. There was no music playing, but these women kept dancing. Yeah, and I was like, "What are you doing? You gotta love the commitment." There's no music, and then the guy that like led these girls out to dance just pumping shit up, and it's just honestly very weird. Even the guy. Like, you throw in that Robin Black guy. Is it Robin? What's his name? Robin? Uh, the, um, I don't know who you're talking about. I think it's Robin Black, yeah. He's, yeah, the, the, he's a commentator? Yeah, even he, he's in, like, a fucking glitter yeah. outfit, like, <laughs> with a, like, he just, he just looks bizarre. Yeah. And, like, you throw him into the mix. And just everything about that whole show was so strange. But it was so, it was good. All the fights were really good. When the guy leaned against the cage, uh, leaned against the weird, it's like the, the fucking, angled wall. Yeah. And they keep hitting him and shit. It's just fucking bizarre. There was a chick fight there that was brutal, just swinging. And yeah. I just kept being like, this is so weird. You're in karate pants. You're shirtless. There's mullets. It's like yeah, bizarre experience. And then from the perspective, it showed you the TV perspective, right? So the stage is like this, like the pits. Yeah, it's like a pit. And then above the pit for the TV portion, it looks like they're on a planet somewhere else so it looks like they're fighting on the surface of the yeah. moon there's like a civilization <laughs> on the moon and i'm just like what is going on and then one of the fighters like a lot of the fighters came out and did full dance routines were like yeah. smiling and shit and i was like this uh, is one of the weirdest things i've ever seen in my life but it, like, it was amazing yeah, yeah i'll go again for I sure i was gonna say it sounds like a fun event actually sounds like a fun event you if you took some psychedelics of that you'd be concerned you know you'd be like what it's literally an 80s fucking yeah. like when that guy with the mullet knocked out the bare knuckle boxing champ and then kissed his girlfriend and i was just like what am i watching here? this is so <laughs> weird like imagine you're dressed in as adult karate outfit fighting in front of chris angel the magician you know what i mean how does that occur i want to know how much money these guys are getting paid too like obviously benson versus pettis went down it can't be that much that they're getting paid but come on like it looks fucking sick. It looks sick. <laughs> I'm just so like, I so, kept thinking about it. Like, I kept looking at Volks and being like, yo, this is so strange. What right? do you think of the same shit? It's like, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah, I was like, well, we went because we wanted to see Pettis versus Benson. We're like, yeah, yeah. that's a legit, that's a legit fight. Yeah, yeah. 
But again, the whole time we're just looking at each other and be like, bro, this is so weird. Like there's, there was so many weird celebrities there that you like recognize the face or something. You're like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Hey, like The ones who can't get, can't get into the UFC, go to that one. Yeah. Again, just strange, eh? It sounds like I'm talking shit on Chris Angel, but man, it's you got to admit, it's pretty bizarre it's pretty to be big, watching yeah. adult karate tournament yeah. and there's a fucking magician to your left watching it too. Well, that guy grew up when like fucking all the karate movies are coming out. So he's probably like, bro, this is the sickest shit I've ever seen. It, it, dude, it is an 80s. It's like the karate kid embodied. Yeah. I swear to God, whoever came up with the idea like must have been so hot re-watching <laughs> the karate kid and been like, let's fucking do this. Is that not GSP's thing? GSP commentates, but I don't he does, He's like the like owner or something. Yeah, I don't. I was going to ask who put that shit together. I really thought it was his stuff because he's into that shit. It'd be expensive. For yeah. sure, their production value and shit yeah, yeah. was expensive, eh? But yeah, so strange watching these guys in karate outfits as adults dance to, like, intense dance. They were like, you know? <laughs> and they're not, I mean, the performer, the dance performances are, are good. They're not Genki Sudo yeah. level entrances, you know? Like Honestly, I just want to tune in for these alien dressed girls. I want, what the fuck does that even look like? That was, yeah, that was bizarre, eh? Some some slightly on the thicker side, full body painted, alien out. And the whole, t- like, dude, I was like, it took me a while to realize that when I looked at the screen, we're in space. And then I realized, oh, they're aliens. For a second there, I was like, what the fuck are these women dressed like? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know. I have to, I've never seen an event. I've seen, like, highlights on Instagram. You've got to I, watch it, eh? got to watch it for Incredible, sure. incredible show. But it's just, it leaves you thinking, like, you go from, like, I go from that, to yeah. the UFC the next night? Yeah. Wild. And, and wild. then the day before that, you're just randomly at a Raiders game? Yeah, so, yeah, I don't even know how that happened either. That's another thing, <laughs> eh? Like, dude, the, like, the crowd of an American football game. That's, wait, wait. The Raiders fans are known for being fucking weird, just to, to lead that off. But, yeah, go on. I know, but it's just, man, it's it's a weird audience of people. Yeah, the, you know yeah. I mean? those fans are fucking weird. They come in, like, like, uh, black face painted with like fucking pirate shit on. Dude, that's strange. Hey, like I want to do a podcast interview with someone that gets dressed up to go to a sports game of any kind. <laughs> who is that person? Does anyone know who they are? No, that's why they put the black face mask on. Yeah, because it's like, like how do you come to a point in your life where you're like applying makeup to to go support a sports team? It's yeah, that is a heavy investment. You know what I mean? Like. Obviously, you're like at a kiss concert when you go to watch the Raiders game for sure. Yeah, like obviously sporting events. Like, like I'm friends with Vox. Like, I there's not a person on earth that I'd be like, fuck, I support this guy so much. I'm gonna get a fucking outfit made <laughs> to fucking look ridiculous, eh? But yeah, I mean, dude, there's I a get lot it. of them. They'll do. There were so many yeah. at the Raiders game. Eh? Raider Nation is like known for that shit. Like, if you go to any other football game, a lot more normal. You will get a random guy dressed like a dolphin here and there, but that fan base particularly is known to look like that like but, but, but like i don't get it eh? i don't get it either but yeah it's so strange eh? and i just happened to show up to a raiders game where they scored the highest points diff- like yeah the most goals they've ever scored yeah. i believe eh? it's called a touchdown brother yeah whatever whatever <laughs> it is eh? i don't even i don't even get american football someone was trying to explain it to me that it's like uh it's been to represent like an old style battle where it's like you cross, you got to cross the line. I you know when they see would slowly that. move to yeah, yeah. I kind of see that. I know, but fuck me, it takes a long time. Hey, eh? I felt yeah, like the most social media influencer person ever because I showed up to the game, I took a photo, part of, and then wanted to leave. You know, because I was like, fuck, I'm over this. Hey, eh? like yeah. the av- the arena, whatever, Allegiant Stadium was yeah. sick. I was, was gonna sick. ask, how is that? Crazy, yeah. so nice, eh? Hey? But still, like two hours of football. That's a like, long time. That's fucking. Like, even with the, that many touchdowns, cause people are scoring touchdowns, like, 10 foot away from me. And I'm just like, yo. It's <laughs> enough. <laughs> like, enough already. Hey, you've won. Like, yeah. Let's call it a day. Dr. Hey. Stoppage. Yeah, man, I don't know. I feel like um, uh, that that weekend for you, you had to have seen just, that's like the most American weekend I think you've had since you've lived here ever. Yeah, and that's obviously why I've decided to move to Bali. Hey, <laughs> that's enough America for an entire lifetime. And the best yeah. part, I mean, imagine that. We go to a Raiders, a Raiders game. I don't watch football. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Like, there were so many people in costumes and shit. And it was just strange. And, you, and actually, the best part about being at the football game was just, the, obviously, the diversity of the crowd, right? But right in this front row, like, you obviously, there was some big, beefy, masculine fucking white guys, front row, supporting the Raiders, fucking right into it. And then... A gay couple arrived a little bit later, right? Dressed extremely gay. 
Like, you know, I don't even know how to describe that. Probably wear similar things to me. But they're at a Raiders game and they come in and they've what they're drinking is fucking glasses of red wine. And they're like sitting behind these guys. And the, the, the fan base doesn't, like you look at this guy and you think, that guy hates gay people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And he probably does. But yeah. at that moment, he took a look back, saw this gay man with like 20 piercings, fucking leather pants, yeah. a red wine at a football game. And he's like, come in here. Yeah. And he brings him down to the, because they share this front area yeah. and they were embracing watching the football game. Well, if you're oh. saying fucking leather pants and 20 earrings, that's what a pirate would dress like. That is literally the Raiders. Oh, they're pirates. They're probably like, this, know, this is one of us. No one looks at a Raiders fan and goes, I bet he enjoys a glass of red wine. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. They That's think, true. they look at a Raiders fan and they go, he has a light bulb pipe in his car right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I remember seeing that beautiful moment amongst a person that I thought would hate that. And they yeah. just came together over fucking giant dudes kicking a football around. Yeah, I yeah. was like, maybe that's what it's all about. God bless know. America, bro. Yeah. Support the troops. Fuck is the first responders. Yeah, maybe that's what the LGBT community need to do. Hey, you, I'm gay. <laughs> God bless America. I love how you try to find the letters, but you're like LGBTQ. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, to, uh, it's hard to keep going. It's a lot of letters, to be fair. It's I a lot of letters. I barely know the alphabet as it is. Yeah, and Americans aren't even taught the alphabet in school, eh? So it's like, for them to tackle six, seven letters at a time, <laughs> incredible I know there's a there's some them to accept a community of people where they don't even know that many letters in the alphabet, you know? That's why. And then you're involving mathematics with a plus at the end. Yeah, it's fucking confusing. That's difficult, It's eh? a fucking equation. But I, so that's, so my, my weekend starts with the Raiders game. I end up at a fucking adult karate event. And I'm not even saying that ironically. That's a fucking adult karate yeah. event. I go to the UFC we. Strickland, yeah, uh, ultra yeah. American man, attacks another man in the crowd next to me, and then I get on my plane. I think the weirdness. Has, well, we go to the after party, get fucking cooked. I think the weirdness has come to an end, and then I get on my plane to fly back, and twenty guys in cowboy hats are on this plane. Unironically, these guys are just wearing cowboy hats on an airplane to come here to Texas, and I'm just like. What on earth is happening? Like, did I do so many drugs in Bali that I don't even know it's reality anymore? Because <laughs> I don't get the cowboy outfits, eh? Like, masculine men should have let that go with the village people. Like, when the frontier, when we didn't have a frontier anymore, like, maybe, all right, maybe you live in a fucking Alaska, wear a cowboy hat. Yeah. But, like, I, let it go, you know? You're on an airplane. Yeah. Leave your cowboy hat at home. Why do you need to bring your cowboy hat on an airplane? Like, there's no way you need to fly in America where you should be like... Fuck a bit out my cowboy yeah. today. Can't leave that. Can't miss that. I just I don't know. Like it's already so uncomfortable to fly as it is. Like wearing a hat that big while flying has to be the worst. Like how do you sleep? Do you like tip it like fucking? Yeah, <laughs> I mean cowboy hats should have stopped existing long before airplanes were invented. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that shouldn't have even been a thing. Maybe you know? they want to put it in their luggage, but it doesn't fit, so they have to wear it. You know. Because why the fuck would you fly with us? Again, super uncomfortable. All right, but let's say you you live in Texas and you're like, oh, just taking a family, which another thing they do, they take a family fucking vacation to Vegas. You're like, hey, let me take me and my four kids to a fucking casino. That's a great idea. That's some, let's give these kids some culture. And then they go, oh, fuck, better bring out cowboy hats. We don't want someone to think I'm not, what, a no. cowboy? Like, what are you wearing it for, right? That's a good point. That's actually a good point. That trips me out about Vegas too. Eh? It's like that's the family vacation spot for a lot of Americans. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, what? I know some of the places have things for kids, but like, what do they do? Just swim in a pool, you know? Yeah, I guess those are the type of families that go to a resort and just stay there the entire time, don't do anything else. Because you're not gonna, you can't take the kid gambling. Yeah, I mean, if I had a kid, and I probably do somewhere, I would never bring that kid to Vegas. Eh? Yeah, yeah, that's an like, adult trip for sure. Yeah, like <laughs> imagine being such a selfish parent. Obviously, Vegas is a cheap, affordable spot. Yeah, yeah. So again, I get it if you're looking for a cheap holiday, but imagine being a parent and being like, "Fuck it, we're bringing the kids, taking the sapphires." Eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Interesting I, I, choice for a vacation spot of all the places you could go. America has some of the best national parks in the world. And most people, not most people, percentage of them, yeah. that wear cowboy hats go, oh, fuck yeah, let's bring it to Vegas, eh? <laughs> the crowd there, too, is also weird as shit. It's a weird crowd in general to bring, bring your kids around, you know? like. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, you don't, like, you, you walk down the strip and there's just 
three hundred pound people with giant slushy cups. Yeah. And you're like, uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know. If you were to look at a like a Vegas hotel, and you could imagine what's happening in every room, you can imagine like the family who is bringing their kids to the resort, the fucking guy who's you know fucking prostitutes in another one, and like you know, it must be like a, a a wider range of shit that happens in that city on any given night. Oh yeah, that's that's interesting. And the cheaper the hotel, probably the on average yeah. more interesting the uh, hotel yeah. room is you know Better but activities. the real weird shit goes on in the rich rooms but you know like yeah. every room at the fucking what's a what's it the luxor has got something yeah. happening you know <laughs> that's I mean? the castle right uh, no that's the pyramid oh uh, the pyramid there's a one that's like actually a castle and that looks like they have a fucking weird time in there i've stayed at that one and they have the fucking weird performances what is it? it's like a medieval theme yeah right? yeah yeah and yeah. they have a medieval performance <laughs> are there rooms like that um, yeah, actually, you know what? It, 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 now I understand why those a certain type of person spends all the time in Vegas, eh? Because if you're if you go, hey, let's go fucking stay at a place that looks like a castle with a medieval <laughs> performance at night. You know what I mean? All yeah, the yeah. all the people that are performing shows at these casinos, yeah, yeah. it's like if that's enough to hook yeah. you to go to Vegas, like. Bro, oh, but think about it. It's great. You take your missus. You're like, yo, you never take me anywhere. I'll take you to a place that has Paris. Has New York. I could take you to medieval times. There's a fucking pyramid so we could pretend we're in Egypt. Now there's a fucking sphere in there. It's fucking, you could, you take one trip there, then you've been everywhere. Yeah. That, yeah. You're basically, as an American, if you've been to Vegas and walked to the strip, you've basically done as much as Christopher Columbus for the average American, eh? <laughs> oh, fuck. What a city. What a yeah, fucking city. Yeah. Vegas is cool, but I remember for a period I thought I could live there, but now I really think like you spend an hour on the strip, you know, you get in. Yeah get out it's like vegas is like a girl you shouldn't be having sex with you know what i mean you're gonna minimize time inside yeah it's fun but you got to get in and get out because you spend too much time in there you might get trapped you might get emotionally yeah. attached yeah. or something you know <laughs> i imagine a lot of the people who live there are people who went to visit and just never left yeah but i, I, I want to know like are you a guy in new york well not in new york are you a guy in fucking some part of Alabama already in a strange costume and you go, where do I belong? I belong in Vegas. Or do you grow the mutton chops and wear the aviators once you arrive? You know, because yeah, everyone yeah. seems to be in costume there as well. I feel like you lose your fucking mind after you lost your life savings in gambling. So you probably grow the mutton chops there, I'd say. That, yeah, that, that is very true. Yeah, yeah. When I was in Atlantic City, there was a homeless guy outside. This is for trials. There was a homeless guy outside who was like, had a sign that was like, I came here and like, the 70s lost everything I got and I've I've just been here since he just like sleeps on a bench and gambles whatever money you give him that sounds like a bright future eh? yeah that was in the 70s it's fucking 2023 like holy shit I mean that says a lot about the American healthcare system if you can survive homeless for 50 years you know I saw a guy there that was like kicking the nuts for $20 um he didn't do it but that's a bold commitment too eh? <laughs> That's a very, very bold commitment. One last thing I'll comment on is MMA fans, obviously, and signatures. Why do you want someone to take a fucking photo, cunt? You know, like, who's collect Like, signatures existed because there was a time period where you were like, yo, I fucking met Marlon Brando. Yeah, yeah. And people were like, no, you fucking didn't. Yeah, and you yeah. were like, look, here's a, here's a signature. Yeah, I've got proof. Yeah. Take a photo and fuck off. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like... You don't yeah. need anything other than that. Uh, the fucking signature has more. You could sell that shit if you have some hard times. You know. To who? Another retard? You know. Like, yeah. Wh like, why do you? Why do I want a signature of this guy? Dude, you know, I like, get you. I don't even take pictures with celebrities, but I would say if I was to do one, I'm thinking business wise, I can sell whatever I get signed online to some shit. That's why the fighters hate generally doing the signatures you know all right maybe buy a poster of the ufc event you went to the one you went to that has all the fighters signed on there yeah, and shit, yeah. but like yeah leave it alone just take a fucking photo yeah. chill out eh? that seems like a miserable time too having to sit there and sign fucking a thousand fucking things my hand would be fucking dead yeah i was trying to tell volks i was like yeah because sometimes people put they're so starstruck they give you the paper you sign it i mean i've signed a few things for the jujitsu people mm -hmm. you know and i but not on the scale of obviously volkanovsky yeah but I always thought how sick it would be if he just drew a dick <laughs> and they didn't even realize. And then they walked away later. Like if it was the yes. guy that didn't even take a photo, yeah. just a signature, he sees Volkanovsky, he draws a dick on there, doesn't even look at it. 
And then later he has to tell people that story. And Vox, with his character type of guy, he is no one would believe it. Yeah, <laughs> he's so good. That actually be pretty fucking funny. That's that you got to do that to somebody at the next competition you go to or some shit. Just someone would be like, "Can you sign my white belt?" And I just draw a dick on it. That'd be sick. Eh? <laughs> or if your signature, like if I was an MMA fighter, I'd make my signature a dick. Look like a dick. Just yeah. make it a dick. That's so fucking sign funny. Sign fucking. <laughs> Fucking checks with it and stuff. Eh? That's a good way to get out of the UFC. Be like, you know what, dude? We don't have, we don't need you to sign the poster yeah, this time. Don't sign the poster. Eh? <laughs> yeah, that shit sucks. Eh? I've had to do that for some events where you're like, yeah, yeah, and then they move it. Yeah, yeah. Do you have to do that for Fight Pass, uh, the the UFC Invitational. Yeah, yeah. and you know what's weird? The more you sign, the weirder it gets. Yeah, like you start fucking changing your signature. Yeah. You don't even know it. Eh? You're fucking. You're losing your mind. The first ones are very much proper, and then you eventually just like fuck it, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Because, I mean, again, who wants a fucking yeah. Greg Jones yeah. grappling poster signed, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I've always found that to be weird. I've never really been the type of person to be like, oh, let me take a picture with this person. Because, um, yeah, it's pretty pretty awkward. I like the idea of taking pictures with real, real weird celebrities, eh? Like, fucking, we were in Abu Dhabi and I missed it because I was in the medical check thing or whatever with Vox. But Steven Seagal walked past yeah. and it's like, hey, I would take a picture with him. Yeah. Ask him some weird shit, eh? Yeah, but that's like, yeah, every, there's like certain people, but I see some people who like will wait outside your hotel fucking lobby and I'm like, dude, fuck off. Like, what are you doing? It's just a fucking signature or, or a picture like, fucking, that's terrible. Yeah. I think if you, if you have a chance encounter or something, hey, just be, be pretty respectful yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like I know sometimes I've been with Izzy and uh, if people be like, hey, can I grab a photo? And he's like, no. And they're like, oh, no worries. Big fan. Yeah. He, he then is like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. I'll, I'll stop going out of my way. Yeah. Sometimes if he's, someone's like, hey, can I get a photo? And he's like, not right now. And the guy's like, fuck you. Then it's yeah. like, all right, that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. Fucking asshole anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, people don't really think like, these guys have like long ass days. And like the last thing they want to do is stop to take 30 pictures with fucking a line of people. And then the worst part is you... Let's say you're the one, you take one, and then everybody just fucking, they might not even know who you are. And people don't understand the photo taking process. You know, like, all right, so think about this. Um, a lot of the time, like, if I take a photo, if I take photos at seminars, sometimes I'll have 200 people lined up to take a photo with me, right? Yeah. And I try to insist that one person takes the photos because one of the most annoying processes ever is when, you see like someone's that doesn't know how to use a phone <laughs> and he's just like, uh, uh, so like so you're fucking stuck there with your arm around this person and the person that's taking the photo doesn't know how to use a yeah, phone. Yeah. Eh? Like, and they're just yeah. like, Oh, I, Oh, can you unlock yeah. it? I don't know how to use it. And then the worst is like, guys, if you have an Android, don't even ask for a photo. Eh? <laughs> no one knows how to use it. Eh? I was going to say, yeah. Uh, like some, like people be taking photos with iPhones and some kind of walk up with an Android and he takes 30 seconds because yeah. the guy's like, yo, where's the camera yeah. app? How do I take the photo? Yeah. To be fair, I, uh, Legion, that happened. I was taking the photos for you and it's like iPhone, iPhone, iPhone. I'm like, oh, got a hang of this. I have an iPhone. And then you have the one guy with the fucking Android and it has like 77 buttons and like a line. And I'm like, bro. And then you press the button and it takes like 40 seconds to take a photo. I'm like, dude, don't ever do this shit again. Yeah, it's a, yeah. If you have an Android and you want a photo, ask your friend with an iPhone to take it, please, <laughs> hey, because you like you're taking a lot of time. I remember I heard Eddie Bravo back in the day at seminars. The photo will be free, but if you want him to smile, you have to pay money because smiling causes wrinkles. <laughs> I can get behind that, not because of the wrinkles thing, but because you have to hold a smile. Like imagine two, imagine holding a smile for two hundred people. Yeah, yeah. And then of those people, ten of the broke bastards have fucking Androids that barely even work. Hey, eh? and you're yeah. like, how are we gonna? How are we gonna get through this? Yeah, you know? yeah, that is that's actually pretty fucking funny. Shout out, fucking Eddie Bravo. That's hilarious. I think it's totally, totally reasonable. That's fair. Request. That's fair. But what else we've got to cover here? Why? Where have I been? And why haven't I done a podcast? <laughs> why haven't we done a podcast in a while? All right, Sanibal, new sponsor. All they had to say to me was their name. I saw a bull in the name. I myself am a bull. These are for these gloves are for bulls only, not for cucks. Um, but yeah, Sanibal, they'll give you 18% off if you use the code silver, silver, the code is silver, silver guys. I was waiting for someone to yell that out for me. If you use the code silver, 18% off. And I said, Hey, why is it 18? That's a pretty obscure number. And he said, that's actually to remind Freddie of the legal age in most States of America, which is very considerate of them thinking about your future behind, behind bars. Shout out Sanibal for looking out for me. What a great sponsor. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously holding an MMA glove. Not that I would ever use it, really. I don't even train with the MMA fighters with gloves on, but I will give it an attempt. I haven't trained with MMA gloves for over 10 years, maybe even more, 13 years or something. A long fucking time ago. But these are the best gloves I've handled of all the variety of gloves, which is just simply these ones. Yeah. Great little wrist action, you know, if you want to use this. Like, look at that mobility. Yeah, good wrist flexibility. eh? Obviously, if your boyfriend's asshole is very big and your fist is no longer doing it, pad it up with one of these. You're going to get a bit more traction on that. You might leave it behind, eh? They also have a collaboration with NASA, a legal one, unlike me where I just steal people's ideas. They have a legal one, which is actually pretty funny because it's like a lot of people in the jiu-jitsu community think NASA's a fucking conspiracy and they think the Earth's flat and then Santa will go out and go, you know what? We'll fucking show them. We'll make a NASA rash guard. NASA shorts as well, I think. That's pretty funny. And if you're into that, Nothing would provide... If you train at a 10th Planet School, please show up in a NASA rash guard from Sanibel. That would be funny, hey? Yeah, that'd be pretty fucking good. That's going to get you a conversation you're probably going to regret immediately, but it's the premise that we enjoy, and it's 18% off if you use the code word SILVER. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been in Bali. And one plug I want to give to Bali is you can buy ketamine in Bali, and you can buy liquid ketamine from a pharmacy. It's not illegal. I think. And I you think can take that liquid ketamine and you could put it in a Sudafed nasal spray. And that might be one of the best experiences of my entire life, honestly. <laughs> uh, is there more or less drip down your throat? There's, a, there's still a fair bit of drip. Fuck. But you enjoying it. You know what I mean? Yeah? Okay. Because that's my least favorite part. That's the thing is like in America, you can't really get that. Like they have some ketamine prescription stuff like, but like I couldn't be up on stage being God bless America if like I can't even buy a fucking prescription free ketamine over the counter. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah, that is, that is pretty sick. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining it is also a lot better. I love the people that I surround myself with though because like when we figured out we could do this in Bali, we were like happy with ourselves. Like we're on a health kick. We're like, hey, look at us. <laughs> look at us now. We're going to wake up yeah. feeling great tomorrow. That's, that's, a, that's a positive day for us. That's yeah. like starting a diet. That's like a New Year's resolution. Yeah, eh? yeah. It's like January 1st, I'm only doing ketamine. Farewell, nose beers. Farewell, MDMA. Yeah. It's ketamine for me now. Yeah, man. I mean, after a long night, it's definitely rough on your nose, bro. You wake up the next day with a fucking fucked up nose. That, that, yeah, that's very true. That's very true. The beauty of the time I was doing it was I actually had a cold anyway. So me just pounding a Sudafed nasal spray. It was a, it was fitting. Yeah. Hopefully, there was some Sudafed left in there. That's so fucking funny. Yeah. What else? So what else did you do? Like, can you you still can't talk about what you guys did yet? Nah, nah. We can't talk about that. Eh? Fair, fair. Wait till the charges are fully dropped. Good, good, good. Um, <laughs> but what else are we doing in Bali? Bali is full of people escaping life. Any expat that lives in Southeast Asia is obviously there for uh, underage women or to run away from life's problems. Yeah. The more time I spend there, the more I can get behind that movement, you know? Yeah, yeah. You were there with uh, Joe Lopez? We convinced Joe Lopez to come, much to his detriment when we released the videos. We actually filmed a podcast with him, but uh, we can't even post it. Joe Lopez being Volkanovski's coach because, like, obviously, I feel bad about it. If yeah, I feel bad, imagine that's bad, yeah. how bad the podcast is. I've never seen you feel bad about anything in your life. Well, I feel bad mainly for Volkanovski that we can't have that. Like I, pre- like Joe Lopez opened the podcast with a joke about Islam being knocked out, about Islam knocking Volks out. That's yeah. how drunk and out of control this man was. <laughs> yeah, that's best that doesn't go out. Ooh. I saw you did a promotion over the fucking phone. Yeah, yeah, but well, yeah, we did a promotion over the phone. That was Joe Lopez's way of coming to Bali uh, instead of. That's uh, how you got him. Instead of going to his own grading. Yeah. He did it for his student because Mitch likes me, but really he did it to escape to Bali. Yeah, yeah. Run away from his life like everyone else does. To be fair, I would want my head coach to leave to hang out with you and promote me on FaceTime. Yeah, that that was a good time. What else? Bali, I chipped my tooth in Bali. Mm, yeah, you got a fucking nice little... Yeah, bruised up here as well. Bali's taken a lot from me and still probably likely to take a whole lot more from me. Yeah. Before even this year's done, I would say. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, we keep going over there, supporting Bali MMA. Mitch, Oscar, and Frank, I keep going over there stealing sunglasses from him. We had a party over there, though. Uh, he, I'd already 
You'd already given me a lot of sunglasses, yeah. but some of the people at the party took those sunglasses. So yeah. I've got to recommend that don't leave your shades around yeah. people that desperately need eye protection, you know, because yeah. they will fucking take them. The last podcast got a lot of buzz. You guys have an adventure coming out with the next pair of sunglasses. Yep. Obviously, we won't talk about it here. We but can't talk about it, but I would liken it to when Steve Jobs brought out the iPhone. Fuck. Visionary, bro. It warrants a turtleneck sweater presentation as well. <laughs> but that'll be coming out, I don't know when, when his child laborers put it in their production line. Yeah, yeah. But I'll be back to Bali in January. Thailand, oh, yeah. Bali, and the Philippines. I sound like a recently retired 60-year-old man, yeah, man in pursuit <laughs> of a young Asian woman. But I'm there for business just like they are yeah, too. Yeah. You, know? you got like a seminar? I saw the, a seminar in Thailand or a Seminar camp? at Bangtao, yeah. So those boys will stop, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. They keep attacking me. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't come over there to support them, but now I will go there. Nice, nice. And what else? Oh, yeah, actually, we need to finish up with the uh, Merigali situation, eh? Actually, first, from, from, from the perspective, right, of... This is the dream, hey. So Gordon, a week ago, a week, he said at the Fight Pass event, he's like, oh, no comment. I won't talk about those guys. They've taken too much. Uh, they get too much clout off me. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. He's, Nicky Rod calls him out for an MMA fight. Um, Gordon makes a response again. Saying the same shit he always says, mm -hmm. but he turns the comments off. That Hilarious. Shit was good. So that's why we call, he's a, you can see he's very hardcore Republic, I'd say hardcore American. He's very much a, I'll say whatever I want, but God bless America. <laughs> I support the troops. I support first responders. Uh, but he, yeah, turned the comments off, which is hilarious. Free speech activist, yeah. Trin Shapiro, Gordon Ryan turns the comments off. Yeah, yeah. And then, so that happens. And then in the B team private messages, I was sent the screenshot of it. So Nikki Rod challenges him to an MMA fight. The MMA fight is offer is declined, but he gets so angry at the B team private message group that he challenges the B whoever runs the B team social media to a fight, and that person writes back, "It's me, Nicky Rod." So we came full circle there. What started as an MMA fight being declined turned into, "Hey, I won't fight you in a cage, but we'll have a fucking street fight." Yeah, which makes no sense. Get paid for it. Yeah, just get paid for it, eh? Yeah, I, I don't see why not, eh? Yeah, I don't know. And then obviously Marigali gets involved, hey. And then that was is, fucking funny, which is pretty cute, hey. Marigali's ultra bothered because he's on a streak, but he lost to me, and I'm really a stain. If I've if I've beaten you, that's a stain on your record yeah, for yeah. life. Yeah, you have to live with that. Mar and Marigali, when he opens his mouth, everyone around the world, even Brazilians, are like, "What are you doing, brother? Just shut your mouth. You <laughs> yeah. hurt yourself every time." A lot of the comments were like that. You know, there's MMA fighters like that. They're the fucking good-looking dudes, talented athletes, but they fucking can't keep yeah. work their way around a sentence. Yeah, yeah. I love the... Um, he tried to be funny and post a video of, like, The Undertaker, and you screenshotted it where it looked like you were just banging him. Just fucking him, eh? Dude, that, hey, that was good. You always have a good way of uh, using what they throw back at them, and it's fucking good. That was hilarious. Well, that was the strangest shit, eh? Because, it's like, <laughs> what did I... I roasted Marigali a couple times, eh? Yeah. Like, and then eight hours later, he drops four edited face swap videos. <laughs> and I'm just... I think to myself, I'm like, well, obviously this guy's got a diverse talent, but he's editing him himself. Yeah. But really, where's where are your friends, Marigali? You know, like when you call up and you're like, I, I'll show him. <laughs> I'm going to make a fucking video of me as the yeah. Undertaker choking him. Or then the fucking dancing, me and Nikki Rod dancing and shit. And like, where are your friends to be like, don't do that? Yeah. That's like, well, what is that? And uh, all the Brazilians were on there. And Brazilians generally hate the guys well, but the Brazilians were like, oh, this is fucking incredible. Eh? Yeah, it's like really a, giving it a strong attempt. Eh? That was like the weakest thing you could have done both to them. It's like high quality. They're like, dude, this is high quality. This looks just like Craig. Well, even just the jokes themselves, I was just like, yeah. like it was like, uh, it was like I'm being attacked by my three-year-old niece or something. You know what I mean? I'm like, bro. Like when he posted those, him, like me, a video of me dancing, I was like, whoa, bro, you've fucking <laughs> crossed the line like Colby Covington here. Like, <laughs> slow down, eh? Yeah, fuck. I mean, like you say, who's his friends? I mean, I can't imagine there's a lot of connecting brain cells happening to come up with a valid argument, you know? Like, you've seen the valid arguments that come back. They're not really that good. Yeah, I bet Nicholas called him up and was like, called up Gordon. He's like, first of all, authenticity has a price. And then he's like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop four video edited yeah. things. That's going to show him. And Gordon will be like, 
Oh my god, that'll get him. Eh? That's gonna fucking kill him. You should have turned the comments off for the for the videos as well. No, nah, because people actually were enjoying it, eh? But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel bad coming at Merrick Garley, eh? Because obviously you come at Gordon, like I say, it's you're, you're entering a battle of wits with an unarmed man. Yeah. Merrick Garley, I mean, Merrick Garley's first attack on me, there was, a, there was a major spelling error within the first five words. And we <laughs> let that, like, I let, I personally let that slide. I made a comment about it. I took it back. I said, no. I was like, no, Craig, English isn't his first language and he's having a crack. So we let him go with it, eh? But like... If there were spelling errors and grammatical issues, but the message itself was funny, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's good, you know? But, like, he's asking for a menage a trois. He's like, I'll take on Nicky Rod if you take me on. And I'm like, listen, you sound like someone's wife, I know, yeah. but that <laughs> is wrong. And I don't even, like, I don't yeah. even care. Right? He wanted you first, too. He's like, I want Craig to come first. And I was like, whoa, whoa, come on. You got to pay double for that. Yeah, is that what he said? He said, yeah, I he, want Craig He, he goes, he wants you first and then Nikki. I was like, bro, that's pretty, it's pretty weird. Yeah, what a strange request, eh? Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna, this is my, <laughs> this is, he's like, this is, this is how I'll get Craig for a match, eh? Yeah. I'll take him on and someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, cool. He goes from like, who is this person to like, I would love to fight this person, but Craig has to come on me first. Yeah. Nikki Rod and Nicholas Mergali should do a match where loser, uh, Fucking quits the sport, never talks again. Something <laughs> like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, they should. Ha we should have like a fuck the fight. I would love to see him in a spell and be contest. See, see who can, can spell better. That that would that would be awesome. Hey, it's a pay per view right there waiting to happen. It's a funny thing with our sport. Like, obviously, Gordon has grown the sport, and people say some people say it's because of the way he talks and mm -hmm. his persona, if it is a persona or not. And I'm like. I don't think so. I think it's grown in spite of it, not because of mm -hmm. it. Because, like, it does turn a lot of people off, you know? like Definitely. I feel bad attacking, making too many autism jokes about these guys and stuff. Because, like, it's, like, not a joke. Yeah. I literally think they don't <laughs> have social skills in any way. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's easily diagnosable. But for the most part, I feel like this type of stuff grows the sport in general. Like, the back and forth, like... It, like we were talking about earlier with the fights, like you need some sort of, people need some sort of emotional connection, especially if they don't train jujitsu. Uh, and this type of stuff fucking makes it fucking fun to fucking watch, bro. Are you fucking jerking it over there, bro? I fucking accidentally deleted something on that. We're back, we're back. I am jerking today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But it's funny. Nicholas Marigali's a fucking, he's a strange character, but he's good. Yeah, yeah. Same with Gordon. I just wish they were cooler. Uh, fun. Uh, wishful thinking he's like taking time off for business but he won't talk about it and yeah dude that smiles. kills me yeah. he's at the press conference and he's like yeah i'm gonna take some time off for business <laughs> he just chuckles yeah. and then the girl's like uh can you elaborate and he's like no and it's like oh <laughs> mysterious yeah man making business moves wow authenticity is mysterious bro yeah, this is mysterious. But yeah, that was it was an action packed weekend for you in all sorts of the ways. Social media, fucking Raiders games, karate, fuck Sean Strickland next to you, fucking almost fucking jumping over Gilbert's kid and beating the fuck out of Drickus. It's been crazy for you. Yes. Yeah, that was that was true. That is very true, eh? But it's over now and I think so is this podcast. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. I don't even know what episode this is. It's been so long. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. That's it. Thank you for listening to the El Segundo podcast. Don't forget, Fat Cry Jones. <laughs>